Aston Villa nil, Man United nil. Um, what did we learn? What did we learn from that? Um, not much. He changed the way that we're going to play for this game. It's not like you know there's there's anything that you can take from this game in terms of how we normally play in terms of uh, you know four two four. There was none of that today. It was the four four two, very defensive, kind of started the pressing from the halfway line. Um, changed the team. When you look at the team from the team sheet, I was I was, I was shocked. No no um, no Martinez, no Delict. It just looks really. It looks like he's given up. If I'm honest with you, it looks like Tenor's given up. I think you know against Liverpool and and teams of that calibre, he went four two four. He tried to do pressing. He, Villa's not there. You know, Villa's not at that level. And and today we just can't went conservative. Don't get me wrong. The Porter game kind of was a shock to the system. I think for everybody involved, but we would have at least tried to see him stick with his principles and his way of playing. There's not the mitigating circumstances from last season. You know, hundreds and thousands of injuries. So I can understand why he was playing the way he was playing last season. There's a clear, you know, a get out clause or excuse like people were talking about. This season there's not that there. There's there's new signings. You want to see a progression. For me, I was in in in, in my mind's eye, I'm thinking, okay, year one, you know, in your here, Dev decided to back him. In and, and game after game this season, it's not been there. So it's time for him to go now, unfortunately. Do you think it was uh, ten ten or trying to get back to basics? Trying to just strip the team back down to some in his head, obviously we think what we think, but in the manager's head, was it like we're conceding too many goals right now? He's gone back to Maguire and Evans. We've kept a clean sheet from it, mm. and we've gone four four two, more compact, not expansive. Is it him trying to um, go back to basics, or is it just to survive that one game? Yeah, I think more survive that one game. Going back to, I don't, we don't know what the basics are with, with this manager, unfortunately. Um, you know, and this and this four four two system. It doesn't look like there was any way of us really, you know, holding down a bit of possession. What were the basics? You know, is it holding down possession? Is it just not conceding? Is it, you know, th th we don't know what that is. Um, I've, we're finished. We're finished. Uh, we need to get a new manager in, basically, as quickly as possible to give us new ideas. Because even within the four two four system, yeah, the way, yeah, issues. it just, it, yeah, he doesn't pick the right eleven. I think a lot of the time we haven't seen Ahmad for so long. Um, you know the the combination of both Bruno and Zerxe, I don't think it works well. You know when they were playing in those games. Um, unfortunately, okay, Mason Mount's gone, but so then we don't need to speak about him. You continuously played Rashford. You know for a lot of the games throughout this first seven, eight, ten games of the season, hasn't really done well. It's only when he scored the one goal, he started picking up a little bit. And against Porto, it was two poor mistakes from the keeper. Funny enough, so. It's just been really, really that. I think this manager has kind of lost for ideas um, in terms of how he sets us up. And, you know, for me, the, the the big sign was the fact that he couldn't play, you know, the Ajax football. What he wanted to do. Yeah. What he wanted to do, what, what he came said to he was do. do. Yeah, and, and, and it got, the wall got pulled over my eyes in a sense of I could see that there was clear circumstances as why he couldn't do it. So many injuries throughout the season. There's, there's, you can't put together any... You know, consistent 11s. Whereas this season, there's an opportunity to do that. And our 11s are still inconsistent. Yeah. So then it's like, he has to go. Simple as that. Yeah. What do you think Ineos will be thinking? Do you think they'll go away on this? I think it's a big meeting on Tuesday, apparently. Do you, you know, we have got two draws in the last game. It's not two defeats. Mm. Although, as fans, it feels like two defeats, yeah, especially midweek being 2 0 up. Mm. Um, some fans, and this is just to give a bit of balance to it, some fans could argue that today is a tough away day. Everyone expected us to get beat heavily. Yeah. We didn't. We kept a clean sheet and we've conceded six in the last two games and went to a clean sheet. Small steps. What do you say to fans that maybe say, keep patient? Which ironically, I, you know, you I, sometimes you are that guy, yeah. but you're saying no. But for, for fans that are maybe saying, well, hang on a minute. You know, we've got Brentford out of the break. Let's try a little something. What are you saying to those fans? See, see from time I'm saying it, just for everyone to know, there should be a massive alarm signs when I'm saying <laughs> Fuck it. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. I mean, and and if and what Ineos, just for the first part of your question, for what Ineos should be thinking, it's like, well, we're giving him a clean slate and we're 14th in the league right now. That would like, if, if because for me, they must really be thinking like me, it's year one, you know, and a lot of people, a lot of fans are saying, well, what do you mean it's year one? And I'm just like, okay, well, I understand. But, you know, in, the structure's come and they've decided to back him, give him the money. So it's year one kind of thing, if theoretically. Mm. And he's not been doing any good in year one, you know, so he's got to go. But for fans that are going to say, draw positives from this, this is not the style of football that we wanted, guys. This is now going back to counter-attacking football. That was boring, yeah. boring football. The, you did, there's no win in the Premier League or getting into the top four when you compare what we do to the competition. You know, it's Liverpool, City, Arsenal, 
Chelsea have got, like you was mentioning, but lots of firepower. Spurs, Spurs Newcastle. Like, all their styles <laughs> Villa. of football. All their styles of football, everyone, is not that. And, and you can't get much out of that. Even his old style of football, the basketball football, I think it's. I think, for example, if Klopp was playing that with Liverpool, it could have done something. It suffocates teams when it's working right, it forces turnovers. You know, if people want to retain the football and have patience, like it, it can. There's something there, isn't it? I that's what I believe. But he's not implementing it correctly. He's not picking the right players for it, so he has to go. Mm. <sighs> with what we did today, did you see any? Any one single player who you're thinking, okay, well, there's there's something there, or do you just see it as out of the whole team? Like Eric just cannot, he cannot get a tune out of out of. Or it doesn't matter who he plays. It doesn't matter who he plays. It's not really about the individuals. Mm-hmm. It's all about the coaching staff and the tactics and, and what he's doing. So so the players do this. Like, I know I know people don't like me to talk about previous tenures, but the players they start to disintegrate and and when we ask them to take the next step, like what Oli was talking about. This happens. They can't do that. That that kind of Barcelona esque football, mm. you know, Man City esque, Arsenal esque football, where you're retaining and suffocating teams. And Ole tried to get us to do that. But this is a different group now. This is a group that Ten Hag's heavily influenced. This is six hundred million pound later. We can't forget that. Luke Shaw's not really there. Mm. Okay, we've had to go back to Lindelof and Maguire and Evans, ironically, but they've helped us. Mm. But you know, you you got Martinez, Delit not playing. Um, you got uh, uh, Ugarte not playing. Xerxes didn't start. Um, like his, you know, Casemiro didn't start. We said Anthony on the bench. We said this is six hundred million later. There was over three hundred million pound worth of talent on the bench. Mm. This ain't just. This ain't the same players that Oli tried to get to make the step. This is a new batch, and they're not making the step though as well. Mm. I mean, the, the core of Bruno and Rashi are there. Mm. Maguire's still there, but you're right. There's so many. Oh, Nana's new. Yeah, there's so many mm. different parts to it. That's different. And, you know, and a lot is on him in terms of his charisma, how he's delivering these mm. messages, you know, the way he punishes players or, you know, his favouritism. So there's a lot that he's inadequate at as well as a manager. Mm. His ideas are good, but he's not transforming them into performances. Yes, but it's like this culture of us, we didn't like Mourinho's style of football after a while. We wanted something more going that way. You know, get like, like those managers couldn't take us going that way. Now this manager tried to do it. But, you know, in the second season or whatever it is, he was saying he couldn't do it as well because he doesn't have the players. And we've only had the players. And he gave him, like, Lee Grant and Dallow in one of the windows as well. Like, he did yeah. have bad windows. Yeah, so, you know, I just think I just think it's just got to go. He can't get the tune out of them. Ericsson kind of looks like a player that should be playing the 10 instead of Bruno. That's the only positive I can really it's kind of... He's a lot of faith in Ericsson right now. Ericsson's getting a lot but, of game time. Yeah, but again, he's doing... Six, it's in the six. It's in the eight. It's like he hasn't got legs for that. But I've been trying to tell everyone, Bruno should be playing. Exactly what Ericsson that you saw, Ericsson and Maynou, Bruno needs to play there. And I know he gives away the ball, hot potato, whatever, but in the final third, you need somebody that's going to a thousand percent assure it gets from A to B. He doesn't do that anymore. And in position football, that's what you want. Is it like, I don't know. This is not the right manager, unfortunately. That's all you can definitely ascertained from this mm. what he was trying to do in the first season wasn't really even his ideas he just tried to stabilise what Ole was doing and teach them a bit more of how to keep the ball and training and all that and he got a tune that's what mm. all of the new managers do when they first yeah, come bounce, yeah. yeah a little bit of a bounce then the second season I for me can't extract anything from that second season because there were just so many injuries so you don't even know it's, it's every week of pulling out of a hat what mm. level you put that's so difficult to manage mm. then this season now he's kind of Built from what he'd done from the last five games of the last season, so that four-two-four shape, but it's just not working. So it's on him now, and he's got to go because of that. Hopefully, the new manager can just have us. Maybe just it needed to be Deserbi. I was talking about Deserbi last season because it's like it's so. There's no option for misinterpretation of what Deserbi wants. It's a bit like it's so the exact same thing all the time. There's no get it. Like it's like we need positional manager, but I'm worried, man.